Jack them up, boys. I've been talking about the keys to the supernatural. The Lord told me today, and I told you I've been, I've been reading every week. I've been reading the word the Lord gave me for 2013. Uh, this morning he told me, don't read it. He says, I want you to only say one thing. He's told me that this year is going to be the year of the supernatural for his word to come to pass in a fullness. And if you want to see that word, it's in the back. It's on a page. The reason it's all kind of in uh, highlighted red is because it's the word. I, that's how I highlight things. When the Lord gives me something that is a word from him, I highlight it in red so that I know that that was from him. And so that's why it's that because it was actually uh, just printed right straight out of my computer. I want to talk to you this morning about renewing your mind which is exactly what I just said a minute ago when I said get a picture. Because a lot of times the only picture we have, if you're in a place of lack, that's the only picture you got right now. I need this, I want that, I need this other thing, I, got, I don't have this, I need... And instead of getting a picture of who you are and who God has said you are and what the name of Jesus will do when we invoke that name, there is no limit to the development of the mind they found out. They can teach you things that grow and grow and grow on the inside of you, and there's no limit to the way that that mind begins to develop. The spirit has to be the, exactly the same way. I have to develop that spirit. There is absolutely no limits. You know, and, and I know that one of the things that went through our head, and I did, uh, this went through my head when the Lord spoke that to me, is, uh, well, you know, some people there's no limit to the way their mind develops, and other people, you know, they, they don't have that same ability. And then the Lord says, I can teach a chimp chimpanzee to do anything. And he says, Humans can teach a chimpanzee to do anything. You can develop a mind. So it doesn't matter how limited we think someone else's mind is. Think about ourselves. And excuse me, don't get in that place. We've got to begin through a communion of our spirit with God's spirit to be able to develop that spirit. Do you hear what I just said? What does communion mean? Communion means a fellowship with what he's done. Um, when we look at communion, such as when we have, uh, have communion, we look at, at that very word, fellowship. Well, what have I, how am I going to develop my spirit to hear from his spirit? Through a fellowship with his spirit which doesn't always mean I'm going to read his word, I'm going to confess his word, I'm going to practice his word. That's not developing the human spirit to hear from God. It develops the spirit man to think what God has said and how God said it. But there's a deeper place that we've got to go. And we've got to get in a position that we understand that I'm... I can't be moved by what my body says. I can't be moved by what my mind says. But I can only be moved by what the spirit man inside. What I know that I know inside. And there's many times that people have left jobs, have left businesses, have left churches, have left many different positions in life that they look back and they've been moved by uh, their their mind or what somebody else has said instead of what God has reflected on the inside. And, and we can't be moved by what else is going on in, on the outside, but instead what God reflects on the inside. I'm, I, I was, uh, something was brought to my mind whenever I was uh, studying and, and praying over this. There was a pastor that I actually was serving under uh, and, uh, sitting for my papers, uh, young in ministry, and there came through a prophet. Prophet had a good word. 
He had, he had some things he taught that day that I applied to my children uh, as they were growing up that were really good. But they lined up with God's Word. And that prophet took that pastor in the back room and he looked at him and he said, if you don't leave this church, your ministry will be destroyed. And that pastor from that very day began to look for some place to go. The Holy Ghost never told him that. He took, one, here's one thing I want you, want you to hear. It doesn't matter what I say, what another prophet says, what somebody teaches you, what somebody tries to tell you that the God has spoke to them. Don't be moved unless your spirit man says this is right. And that pastor left that church. That, at that time, we were growing so big that we were looking at, at 55 acres out on the highway. And we weren't sure that that was going to be big enough. Within six months, that church only had 100 people in it. The pastor had gone to uh, Zimbabwe and almost completely, totally lost his ministry. And now he pastors a little church up, up in a little town in, in uh, some place that I'm just not even going to talk about because he got out of position that he didn't listen to what the Spirit said on the inside of him. Instead, he listened to somebody else. Don't be moved by what somebody else is doing, what somebody else is thinking. Don't be moved by your mind or your body. You know what happened that day is fear began to come in. And when, when fear became to come in, then he was subject to his mind instead of anything else. And, and this isn't about that, Pastor, because there's been many people uh, and, and maybe even some of us that have been in that position uh, in the past. And what we've got to do is make sure that we're not in that position ever again. We've got to develop our, renew our mind, develop our human spirit to begin to think what like God thinks. Not, be, not think on a low level. What we have to realize, it's not our spirit, our mind or our body that got saved. It was my spirit, man, that got renewed. When the Holy Ghost saved me, when I accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior, it wasn't my body that got saved. My body had to come under subjection to the spirit man that was renewed by the Holy Spirit. And so when we actually live on a level where we were subject to our mind or our body instead of what the spirit man's saying, then what happens is we live on a lower level than God intended for us to live on. We need to come to the, and I, and I thought at, at tithes and offerings, Pastor Kathleen was going to start preaching my sermon. We've got to come up to the level of God. The, the, what she talked about is bringing up, coming up to his level. His level is a spiritual level. His level is a place that we move into a position that I'm not going to allow the devil to play havoc in my life anymore. Instead, I am going to live on the level of hearing from the Holy Ghost and letting him lead and guide me. And I'm not going to be moved from place to place or transferred from here to there and have the devil uh, become the one that dominates me. Instead, your spirit man can dominate you. Your spirit man should be the thing that causes you to make the decisions in life that we need. Did you hear what I said? In life. The Bible says that God will give us all that pertains to life and godliness. And if he's going to give us all that pertains to life and godliness, then I've got to come subject to his spirit so that I can have everything that pertains to life and godliness. See, a lot of times we look at things. Turn to Romans 12, 1 and 2. And, and a lot of times we, uh, and, and, and most of you are going to go, well, I know that, that scripture. Turn to Romans 12, 1 and 2. I want you to look at it. In, in, a, in, a, in a way that you probably never have looked at it before, the way that it, it, it is completely and totally intended to be looked at. It is not natural for us to not be moved by our body or our mind. Now, I want you to understand what I'm saying. I'm not saying that when your body hurts, don't go to the doctor, just let the Holy Spirit lead you. That is 
nothing I've ever taught. It's unscriptural, and I wouldn't tell you to do that, okay? But what you do is you don't be moved by what you hear or what's going on in your body. Be moved by your spirit. Man, what does God tell you to do? I uh, happen to uh, look on... Uh, how many of you are on Facebook? You, if you're on Facebook, you know that I don't get on very often. And I happened to look the other day and... and uh, May have been a couple of days ago. I, I've been out of touch with the world, so I, I wanted to look and see what uh, maybe. I know my wife posts things all the time, and because I pretty well have been coming home from jury duty and and going to bed because I've been wrung out and uh, and knew I had to go back the next morning. So I looked at something, and she says, uh, "Praise God!" By uh, and, and she said something about a a book about eating a correct way had had. Uh, helped in, in a in a what she did was she uh began to listen to the spirit man inside because all she did was start start uh, applying biblical principles see it was something the holy spirit and it wasn't the bible that she was reading by the just in case you're you're wondering paul here is not writing to non-christians paul is not writing to christians uh, uh, this, this, these p particular verses have been looked at many times as Paul was t writing to carnal Christians who weren't walking in uh, the Spirit. He was writing to Spirit-filled Christians that were saved, that had had change in their life, that weren't doing the things that all the other Romans were doing, but instead they were living godly lives. And he, he told them this. He said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And this has been taught over and over and over again by, about don't do this because you present your body a living sacrifice. Just because it feels good doesn't mean it's okay to do it. Don't, don't live in, in the way that the world does anymore. Don't do this and don't do that. But instead, what he's saying, he says exactly what he means right here. He says, uh, present your bodies a living sacrifice. How am I going to present my body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God? I'm going to bring my body under subjection to my spirit man because my body cannot rule my life, which doesn't mean I have to worry about don't do this and don't do that because I don't want to do them anyway. And we get in a place that we, we uh, you know, if, if you're constantly dealing with things that you want to do that, aren't godly, then I want you to go back and reflect on what kind of relationship that you actually have with, with the Father. See, it's important that if I'm going to have a relationship with the Father, that I begin to reflect His image. How am I going to reflect that image? It's simply going to be by listening to what His Spirit has to say, doing what His Spirit says, on the inside. And that's what we're going to look at today. Let's go on to the second verse. It says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what, what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I want you to get a picture of what the perfect will of God is. Well, I don't want you to have too much money because you might become greedy. I don't want you to be well because you might go do something that you shouldn't do. Is that the perfect will of God? <clears throat> the first one I said it to almost laughed at me. We have to understand God does not want you to live in lack. So if it's his good and perfect will and acceptable will of God, then it's a, the will of God that I have, what? Jesus said, I, we read it last week. I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Life was Zoe, the, the God kind of life, a, a life of more than enough. You know, and if you want to hear the whole thing, then go back and listen to last week. 
If that's the perfect, acceptable will of God, then I've got to be renewed in my mind that I begin to understand what the acceptable will of God is. I don't have to be concerned about uh, going down to the bar and drinking all night because I don't want to do that anyway. That's not something I, I fight with, but something that I do have to listen to the Spirit about is when my checkbook doesn't look like it's going to make it, or this is coming up, or that happens, or the transmission goes out in your car, or, you know, we can look at all kinds of things. But what is God's perfect will? Listen to me. I'll tell you what to do. I'll tell you how to do it. And I'll come to the place that I will rise up to the cream. I, you know, I don't like margarine. I'm a butter eater. Okay? Butter comes from the cream that rises to the top. And it's God's plan for you to be the cream that rises to the top. How do I know that? His, the Word is full of it through and through. All the way through the New Testament, Jesus continually told us how He wanted us to be over and above. He said, don't worry. He told the disciples, remember when He sent them out, they sent the 70 in Luke 10. What did He tell them? Don't take a money bag. Don't take a money belt. Don't take an extra pair of shoes. Don't take an extra coat. Do you think that he thought they might not need it? No, he says, I'll provide it. You'll get it along the way. Just go. The Message Bible, I love how the Message Bible says it. It says, don't wait, wait on a lot of equipment. You are the equipment. Why are we the equipment? For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. And so we begin to understand his perfect will was for me to have everything I need, which means sickness is not one of them. Anybody need sickness? Not me. It don't need to come visit my house. It don't need to try to come stay. And it doesn't need to be part of my thinking. Because God said, by his stripes, we were healed. Not we're going to be healed. We were healed. So it is his plan that we become healthy, prosperous people that have more than enough for every good work. Turn to uh, John chapter 10. John chapter 10. Praise the Lord. Somebody give him a shout. John chapter 10 verse 1. What color is the writing? Red. Okay. This particular uh, place in, uh, I don't know why I wore a, a wool coat on uh, such a beautiful day outside. Chapter 10, verse 1 says, most assuredly I say to you, oh, I started to tell you, Jesus gives us the answer right here for how the spirit man to begin to be developed into a place that it, we hear the Holy Spirit. Uh, remember this, you know, the, the Bible says present our bodies a living sacrifice. Well, I'm going to live, present my body a living sacrifice by what it says you're the temple of the Holy Ghost. Is that right? What's the temple of the Holy Ghost? Is it my body? Don't everybody answer at once. We're not used to. The temple of the Holy Ghost is the spirit man, not the body or the mind. 
So we have to take the spirit man and bring the body. Paul says, I bring my body under subjection daily. When he says, I bring my body under subjection daily, what he said was, I make my body listen to my spirit man. I make my mind listen to my spirit man. Man, I'm going to tell you, that guy there, he had to, uh, he had to encourage himself in the Lord all the time. I, I can't imagine um, jails weren't the country clubs that they are today. Uh, they were dark. Dreary. If you if you don't uh, if you don't understand what uh, what a jail was like uh, in October, uh, Kathleen and I are going to host a trip into Israel, and you can go into uh, one of the places we will go into is a, is the place that Jesus was held uh, overnight. Um, jails were dark, dreary holes that were way down that were actually many times built as a water cistern. So they were way down in the ground, and it was damp, and it was miserable. So Paul, when he said, I bring my... See, when he wrote, I bring my body under subjection daily, I would imagine that he was dealing with some kind of uh, a cold or some kind of sickness that was, could be attached to uh, being in a damp, dreary jail. Now, remember, I'm just imagining, okay? I didn't say, tell you this was written anywhere. I would imagine that he dealt with constantly some kind of trick the enemy was trying to play on his mind. Well, you know, if God really loved you, he wouldn't leave you here anyway. But instead, Paul over and over and over talked about the spirit man and how the spirit man would overtake and rule the mind, will, and emotions in the body. Verse 1, most assuredly I say to you, he that does, not, that does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. Anybody ever have the enemy come straight in the front door and hang on? It comes through some kind of, uh, some kind of thought, some kind of thing that somebody said someplace, somebody, he climbs over the wall. And that's what Jesus is talking about. He doesn't come through the gate. The gate in the sheepfold was the only way in that was, that you opened it and went in. Remember Jesus said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. Anyone who opens the door, I will come in. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him, the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them. And the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. How do you know when the Holy Ghost is talking to you? You know, instead, what happens is... I've heard this more from the body of Christ, and, 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 and again, I'm not saying that it was from here. But I've heard this more from the body of Christ. Well, you know, I don't really know if that was God, or if it was my thinking, or if the devil was trying to tell me something, or, you know, exactly what was going on. We just read, he said, the sheep know the voice of the shepherd. Let's go on. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but they will flee from him. For they do not know, know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this illustration, but they did not understand the things which he spoke to him. So again, so Jesus said to them again, most assuredly I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. What is pasture picture? Provision. Abundance, more than enough. I don't know about you, I don't like to feed hay. Mm -hmm. 
I like to have hay to feed. I don't like to feed it. I was correcting uh, the thinking going on here because, see, here's the thing. If the grass is growing and they're eating on their own, then I'm not having to take care of them, right? Do you know that God has provided the grass for you to eat? Somebody goes, well, I don't like grass. You understand the picture I'm talking about. God has provided everything that we need. He will provide everything that we need. Jesus used this illustration. Uh, no, um, let's go on. All, uh, I am the door. Verse 9. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to kill, excuse me, except to steal and to kill and destroy. We almost always, or I almost always quote that backwards. It doesn't matter. It's the same. It means the same thing. Except to steal and to kill and destroy. I have come that they might have life and they may have it more abundantly. You know, I'm going to stop right there and, and I want you to think about something. What it said right there in that very per first part, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and destroy. I, uh, I bought this holster that I really liked. I liked the way it looked. You know, it went, it clipped behind my back and my gun had slip in it and I could get a hold of it good. And, and uh, I went to a class, they talked about uh, don't ever point your gun at something that you're not willing to destroy. And that was brought to my mind when, so I took the holster back because I realized that if Kathleen was walking beside me, that gun would be pointed right at her. And I'm not willing to destroy her. I'm not willing to destroy anybody. So the only place for it to be pointed that I was willing to destroy was it can't hurt the ground. Okay. So I took the holster back. See, I liked it. I thought it looked, it was, looked good. It, it, it looked like it was going to work good. But at the same time, it wasn't functional. And a lot of times, we dwell on things that will destroy us instead of things that the Holy Ghost leads and guides us just because it's either before us or it feels good. And sometimes the things that feel good or we think feel good at the moment begin to steal they begin to kill our dreams, and they begin to destroy everything that is God's plan. And, and when we realize that it's God's plan for me to have... See, because he gives this, the, the answer right there at the, in the last half. But I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. I am come that you might have more than enough pasture that you'll have everything that you need. I love the 23rd Psalm, and I love the way that the Message Bible says it because the Message Bible in the 23rd Psalm, when it says he prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies, the, the, the Message Bible says he prepares a feast before me right over against my... No, I'm sorry. It says he prepares a seven-course meal for me right over against my enemies so they can watch how I eat it. That's God's plan for you. God's plan is to go nanny, nanny, nanny. That's the place that we get. And the only way that we can get that way is I begin to encourage my spirit man, develop my spirit man to hear the voice of the Father, to hear the voice of the Holy Ghost whenever he says, do this, do that. Don't do that because there, there are times, there are times people have left jobs, people have left businesses, and people have left churches simply because 
you know, I just feel like I just, I, I just, I need to do that for some reason. But it's not what their spirit meant. It didn't feel right when they walked out the door. It didn't feel right when they left the job that they left. And, and all of a sudden, life starts falling apart. And we can't figure out why it keeps falling apart. Because we listen to our body and our mind, will, and emotions instead of listening to our spirit man and what our spirit man's saying. Because the Holy Ghost tells us and, and we're developed to listen and know what we know. I, I call it down in my knower, you know, and that's, that's just the simply the, the way that I, I know and everybody can understand it. You got a place in, in your heart and in, inside of you that you just know that you know when it feels right and when it doesn't. That's the Holy Spirit trying to lead us and I can't shake it off. I got to go on and do it. The only time I've ever shaken it off, I, I've shared this with you before, I wound up doing a a church service in a town that was about 450 miles from where I knew that I was supposed to be. Now, the cool part was, is the Bible says that the word won't, won't ever return void, and there was several people that got saved that morning in that church service. But I wasn't supposed to be there because I knew that nothing felt right, nothing felt the way that it should, and, and somebody else was, was supposed to do that that church service in that place, and I wasn't in the place that I was supposed to be. And I've never done that again. I repented. I said, Lord, I, from now on, I will listen to that tug inside and that I'll know that it's your spirit. Amen. And I intend to never miss him again. Did you hear what I just said? I didn't say I would never make a mistake. I didn't ever say that I might not step this way and then all of a sudden have to step back. Because when the Holy Ghost lives inside and we develop that spirit man to hear what the Father's saying, then we'll know that if we take that step... See, God can't steer uh, uh, somebody that's sitting still. So sometimes we just sit and wait, well, I'll wait till I hear from the Lord. And He's been telling us to get up and go all the time. Amen. Whatever it is, whether it's to a job, whether it's to a business. Now, I didn't ever say that everybody that's ever quit a job or left a business wasn't supposed to do what they did. Amen. Amen. You, you understand that? There are times that the Holy Spirit will lead you to do something different. Right. Know when that time is. Be somebody that's, you know, you can't steer a, a, a ship that's sitting still but one that begins to move and then begins to listen and begins to s draw back when they need to draw back and change their position a little bit. Might have been that you're supposed to step left instead of step right. Verse 11, I am the good shepherd. And the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But a hireling, you know, I just, I, I want you to look at that verse again. Gives his life for the sheep. The Lord just spoke to me. He says, that didn't mean I just died. That means that I gave everything that I have to my sheep. Amen. Everything that I have to my sheep. You know, we, and we can look at at the fact of, of everything that happened at the cross, he gave everything that he had to the sheep. Not just for the sheep, but he gave it to us so that we could have all the things that God has in, in the God kind of life. But a hireling, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees because he does not care, because he's a hireling and does not care about the sheep. Listen to this verse. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep. And I'm known by my own. Don't be concerned that when the Holy Spirit's telling you something, 
that you might be hearing the wrong voice. Too many times people have been afraid that they're hearing the wrong voice and they don't ever get what God wants them to have. Too many times people have actually heard the wrong voice and moved on that and been afraid to come and move back into the place, whatever the place it is, whether it was a job, a business, or, or a, a, a church, to have been afraid to come back into that place because they were afraid somebody go, well, you know, why did you do that? You know, I really don't care what somebody else says. I'm not moved by what somebody else says. I only care about what the Father says. I have to be moved by... See, because if I care about what somebody else says, I want you to listen to what I'm saying because I'm not saying that I don't love people and I don't care how they feel. What I said was I'm not going to be moved by what they think. I'm only going to be moved by what God thinks because my Father is the only one that can furnish everything that I need in every place that I need it. There's another, another place that uh, so many times we're afraid, and, I'm, and, and I may talk about this a little bit deeper later, uh, and I may not, so I'm going to touch on it this morning. Uh, there's another thing that um, we're afraid to <clears throat> either step out and get filled with the Holy Spirit because, you know, I'm not sure about that talking in tongues deal. Or we think, you know, I haven't been filled with the Holy Spirit because I haven't been speaking in other tongues yet. And what you got to do is you just got to step out in faith and say, Father, I want you to fill my spirit. And let that other thing, let the fact that the prayer language comes on you, let the Holy Ghost do that. It's not something I have to be worried about, and I don't have to be worried about what somebody else thinks or or anything else, or you know, I don't go to prayer time because man, them guys get to praying in a, in in tongues in there, and and uh, don't uh, don't let that limit what God wants you to do. Amen. <clears throat> go into prayer time. Amen. I'm going to tell you, you want to start hearing from the Holy Ghost, yes, right. from the Holy Spirit, as the New King James calls it. Don't be afraid to uh, let the Holy Spirit do what He wants to do, when He wants to do it, how He wants to do it. And then what will happen is you'll, you'll see a whole dimension of your life open up to where God will begin to reflect things in you. Did you hear what I said? I didn't say it's the praying in tongues that causes him to reflect things. It's getting in tune with his spirit because I'm confident that if you get in tune with his spirit, that you'll move the direction that he's, having, that he's prompting you to move in every area, and if that's praying in other tongues, it'll be doing that. And, I, and I'm telling you that I encourage you to uh, develop that place, but I'm not telling you that that's the key to the whole thing. Be in tune with the Spirit. I'm not discounting. I, I'm, I'm, I'm like Paul. I'm going to tell you that I, I pray in tongues more than you all. So I know that Paul was a Texan because, because of his statement in that place. So it's not, it's not that I'm discounting that place that the Holy Spirit moves. But don't get hung up there. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit develop the inside so that the outside looks like God, smells like God, gets everything that God has planned, doesn't live in lack, doesn't live in sickness, doesn't live in, in a, a mental state that, uh, that there's all kinds of other issues tied with it, but instead lives in a mental state that, you know, there's, it's okay to, to live in the fog if it's the God fog. It's okay to not be moved by everything else that's going on. If it's the God way. It's not okay to be living the fog if we're just going through life, la, 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 la. But if we're going through life because I depend on everything that my Father says, having more than enough, get that picture down inside of you 
where God wants you to be. Feed on the word, renew your mind in that way, but then let the spirit renew your mind. Let the spirit renew everything about your body. Let your spirit bring the one that develops it in that place. Let's play that song one more time, can we? Lori knows. You know what, if you need to spend time with the Lord while we're singing this song, let's stand and, and sing. And uh, come on, Roddy. Yeah, uh, Billy, uh, singers, let's all go, not just. Let's worship. Here's one of the things, Kathleen, did you hear Kathleen? She said, there's my cows. I'm pretty sure I don't want those cows because they're probably all dead now, aren't they, Jay? Isn't that old enough maybe that, yeah, about 10 years. So. <laughs> I want them at that age. Here's what I want you to do. Whatever place it is that your mind, your thinking, your body has been, right now let the Holy Spirit speak something to you while we're singing this song. Don't just sing a song. Worship. Let the Holy Spirit speak something to you. And this is a, this is a good time that if you, if you need to just get along with Him, get along with Him and let Him do the talking. And if you haven't been filled with the Holy Spirit and you want to, right now, uh, come up. And John and Gloria are going to be standing over on this side. And uh, come up and, and let them pray with you. Kathleen and I pray with you. And uh, receive the, the infilling of the Holy Spirit so that you can go to that place. Yes. Receive. Yes. That's all you have to do is receive yes. hallelujah oh standala say oh standala say all you have to do is receive thank you lord yes lord yes lord all limitations removed amen thank you jesus his power his resurrection oh, yes. is in you. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. No holding back. Hallelujah. Step out and know every step you take yes. is in him. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Receive. Oh, the love of God. Oh, the love of God. It's the love of God that makes you whole. It's the love of God. There's nothing, 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 nothing that can separate you from the love of God. That's right. Receive my love. You receive his love. Yes. Thank Hallelujah. You, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 So be it. Ooh. Glory be. Let's eat. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, let's rejoice. Eat. Hallelujah. For he does rejoice yes, over you. Yes, he does. Oh, hallelujah. All the time. There's nothing he doesn't Dance want you to have. Yes, He's Lord. made that provision. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Hallelujah. Thank you, it's like the pastor shared. You've got to get that on the inside of you. That picture on the inside of you. Let, let him reveal to you that picture. And then walk in. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank See you, yourself Lord. as he sees you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Whole. Lord. He sees you whole. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Amen. So for those of you who, have, who may have not been someplace where the gifts of the Spirit move, we just had a tongue and interpretation, and I want to reflect on that just for a second, because what it said was just receive. Receive my love. And do you realize that everything, whether it's healing, whether it's prosperity, because that's coming out of lack, more than enough is coming out of lack. And, you know, prosperity could be like way more than enough or it can be just more than enough. Or whatever it is that you need, do you realize that it's all based on love? So that tongue and interpretation, receive my love. Amen. Just receive. I, I love it when the Holy Ghost shows up. Because it's always something that we just realize. That's all I have to do is receive His love. I don't have to try to come up to the place the pastor thinks I should, or I don't have to, to try to please anybody else. All I have to do is receive His love. And everything's based in His love. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you today. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you for that word, thank Father. You, Lord. And today, and if this is you, I want you to say this right where you're at with me. I receive, Father. I receive. And Father, I thank you for that. Father, as we move from this place, I pray over each and every person that's here and each and every person that's watching by internet that, Father, that they will hear from your spirit, understand how to move in that direction and just do it and that they begin to develop their spirits to even a greater place, even if they've already been doing it. Father, myself even, that, if, that, that I'll develop it to a greater place. Yes, thank you. Because I realize, Father, that the steps of a righteous man are ordained to the yes, Lord. Lord. That means that you're talking to me constantly. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You're talking to each one of us constantly, thank Father. You. And that we'll be more in tune to listen. And Father, we thank you for those things. We thank you for safety because you send your ministering spirits ahead of us. I send the ministering spirits out the door right now. Amen. That in the name of Jesus, they'll guide each and every one Thank to the place they're going and that they'll enjoy a rest when they get there. Thank you, and Jesus. Father, we thank you for that in the mighty name of Jesus and by his blood. Amen. Amen. Remember, Jesus loves you and so do we. As you've watched today, you've had the opportunity to hear the word preached. And as you apply that word, you'll get victory in your life. But it has to start someplace. It has to start first with a commitment to Jesus Christ as making him your Savior and then making him the Lord of your life. Paul said this in Romans 10, 8 through 10. It says, but what does it say? The word is near you and it's in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Well, the word of faith that Paul preached is found in the next verses. It says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you'll be saved. For with a mouth confession is made unto salvation, and with a heart one believes unto righteousness. So it goes like this. All you have to do is actually say, Jesus is my Savior and He is my Lord. So I'm going to invite you to say this with me this morning. Uh, and if you want to bow your head, you can bow your head. The Bible says that pray watching, and so it's okay to keep your eyes open and, and watch. But let's say this together. Say, Father, I know that you sent Jesus to die for my sins. I confess those sins today. I ask you, Jesus, to forgive me of those sins and to come into my heart and be my Savior. And I commit today that I will make you the Lord of my life. Thank you for salvation today. In the name of Jesus, amen. If you said that today for the first time, no matter what time of the day or night it is, uh, welcome to the family. Welcome to knowing Jesus Christ as your Savior. Now from this day on, make Him the Lord of your life. And as you make Him the Lord of your life, you will find out what God can do in you and through you.
Also, if you've watched this broadcast, we want you to know that you can become a partner with this ministry. As you become a partner with this ministry, some of the things that you've seen throughout this uh, presentation, uh, the buckouts and, and things like that, then you become a part of that kind of ministry. And there's many people that come to know Jesus. We have offices in Nigeria and Togo, have four churches in Nigeria, one in, in Togo, and uh, we want you to know that you become a part of each and everything that this ministry does when you become a partner. You can see the information right there on your screen so that you're able to become a covenant partner with us. And as you do, we want you to know that we pray over each and every one of your offerings so that God will multiply it back to your hands according to his word. His word says in Luke 6, 38, that he gives back, pressed down, shaken together, running over to make room for more. The New Living Translation says whatever measure you use in giving large or small, it'll be used to measure what is given back to you. So we want you to know that God loves you He'll take care of you, and he'll multiply the seed that you sow in this ground with this ministry. Remember that Jesus is Lord, and Jesus loves you, and so do we.